what is going on guys it's coded steel and welcome to another processing tutorial guys uh my last video i showed you guys or last tutorial i showed you guys how to get input from the mouse pad so this time what i really wanted to show you guys was how to get input from the keyboard because there's obviously a lot of buttons on the keyboard there's only three buttons on a mouse so you can only do like three actions or so with a mouse and whatever else so what if we wanted to be able to use certain keys on a keyboard to switch on certain things in our code or make certain things happen in our code so that's what we're going to discuss today is how we can get things like that to happen so what we're gonna do here first as you guys can see I have my void set up my void loop already or void draw sorry already up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna type another thing called void key pressed and what this does is it takes input from the keyboard and or it call this function gets called or this method gets called every time a key on the keyboard gets pushed it doesn't matter what key it is guys escape f1 you know 7 8 9 10 or well not 10 0 1 plus minus whatever it doesn't matter it this method gets called anytime a key on the keyboard is pressed so what do we want to do when a keyboard gets, we can write code in here that happens when a keyboard or a key gets pressed on a keyboard. So what I'm going to do today, guys, basically, is I'm going to show you guys how you can change the color of the background with keyboard presses. So the first thing we're going to do with that is we're going to go up here and we're going to declare some variables. I'm going to declare R, G, and B, just like the color values. And we're going to make sure they're all set to zero because just want to make sure they're at zero, not at random memory locations. And then we're just going to take those variables and we're just going to plug them directly into here. So right now, guys, if I built this code and I ran it, I should get a black screen. Well, um, another thing I'm actually going to do here is in size, I'm just going to change the size to 200 by 200 because it's a good window size. And that's what I usually use for like intro tutorial type things. Obviously, it's not big enough to do really big applications, but it's perfect for this tutorial. Anyways, right now we would get a black screen if this code was built. So we want to make it to where we can change these color values and change the background color of the screen. That's the goal of this program. So what I'm going to do to make that all happen is I'm going to start with my key pressed function down here. I'm going to do some stuff in here. What am I going to do? I'm going to do something else we haven't talked about. And I really shouldn't do two new things in one tutorial, but I think you guys are pretty smart and you should be able to handle it. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to type the keyword switch. And what this is, is basically it's an if loop that checks multiple it's it's basically an if loop in and of itself but it's an if loop that has multiple conditions let me show you guys what i'm talking about so i'm, I'm going to put the key and this is another thing key stores the mouse or stores sorry not the mouse stores the key value push so if it's a seven a seven goes here if it's a y the y gets stored here it's just like before guys when we talked about the mouse button it stored left, right, and center before, and whatever else, and then we could check to see if it was left or whatever else. It's just like that, except, you know, we want to make sure, actually it wouldn't even be the, the string, sorry, I screwed up. It'd be like that. And we th th do the same thing with this. We can check and see if key is equal to Y or something like that. So... That's what the key variable does, is it stores the value from the keyboard. And the mouse button, obviously, but like flash tutorial, it's just like the mouse button, but it's for the keyboard. Anyways, okay, now that I'm done confusing the hell out of you guys, um, we're going to go into this switch case here, and we're going to basically type case, just like I said. And what that is going to do is, basically, this is where your if begins right here. So this is how this works, guys. We're switching on a variable key. So depending on what key is, we're going to do some stuff. If key, if key is Q, then we're going to do what's below Q. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do R++. We're going to add to R. 
And then we have to do something that lets it know that the case, this case is done. And we say break, then it knows this case is over. So what I'm actually gonna do to simplify things for me a little bit here, is I'm just gonna copy this and I'm just going to paste it down a few times. Six times to be exact. One, three, four, five. This should be six right here. And I'm going to change the variable, the variable here. So I'm going to use Q A W S E and D. So I think you guys can probably see what's fixing to be going on here in a second. I'm just going to change this to a minus minus. So when I push this, I want it to, or when I push A, I want it to decrement. I'll explain it all in a second. I shouldn't have done that, that was stupid. G minus minus uh, B and B minus minus. Okay, so I think you guys can see kind of what's going on here. When Q is pressed, I wanna add one to R. When A is pressed, I wanna subtract one from R. And same thing with G. When W add S minus E add D minus, okay? So that, as you guys can see, are gonna change these color values. So w there's one other thing we gotta take care of before we run this code. What if the things max out to 255 or go to zero? We don't want the values to go negative. We wanna bound them between zero and 255. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna type some if statements down here outside of the switch case parameter here. So we're gonna do r less than zero. Then we wanna just say r is equal to zero. And that's all we are gonna do. And we're gonna do this five more times to take care of a ton of stuff here for us. So, uh, I hate how this stuff works. Okay, and then we're just gonna copy this last one and we're gonna paste it. Okay, cool. So all I'm gonna do is change this to a G, this to a B, M, actually the R, G, G, B, B. Okay, and then we're just gonna change this to a G, G, B, B. So we've got all of the R conditions take, or all of the R, G, and B going whatever directions the uh, negative now we need to take care of them maxing out so just like you guys are seeing me type and then we say then it's 255 that's 255 and that's 255 so this lines of code here are just gonna bound red between 0 and 255 and won't let it go any higher so if it's negative goes back to 0 if it's greater than 255 goes back to 255 so it will max out. So that's what we want this to do, guys. We don't want it to be able to go way over 255 or way below zero. So we bound it like that. And the last thing I'm gonna do is something just to kind of let you guys see what's going on with these variables, is I'm just gonna type in R, G, and B into a print LN statement. So that'll just return us the color values. So let me explain to this you, you guys this code before we actually run it. Up here, we initialize our variables, red, green, and blue. Okay, that should make sense to you guys. Set our window size and setup, pretty simple. Then we're just doing a background color. By default, when we build a code, it's gonna start at zero because of where we started our RGB values. Their RGB values are started at zero, so the screen's gonna be black. So then we have down here, we're just switch casing, which is a basically a big if loop that just takes and tests the same thing multiple times without having to write if, 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 multiple times and then putting a bunch of junk in there. We can just do it this way, just one big string of cases that happens with this variable. Instead of writing if key is this, if key is this, if key is this, I can just do switch on key when it's this, 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 do all of this stuff within the before the break statement. So. If that all makes sense to you guys, then we can build this code and I can show you guys how it works. It's actually pretty cool code that we are running for once here. You guys can see I got a black screen right now, okay? Um, not much going on, but if I touch the Q key, it adds one to red. 
you guys aren't going to see any real color changes until the color value gets high enough to where it actually displays. Now you guys should see it starting to turn a little more red. Now it should be very visible to you guys that it's getting quite red, which is good. I could have made it to where we can make it to where uh, the color values change a little more quickly. And I think that's actually what I'm going to do because this is just taking forever. So we're going to do plus equals 5, minus equals 5, and all of this stuff. I think I did discuss this before, so you guys should remember this. Just to, just to help this thing along a little quicker for us. That way we're not waiting for an eternity for it to change. So there you go. Right away, guys, we're already noticing a color change, which is good. So I got some nice purple going on there because I mixed red and blue. I mixed green back in there. You guys are going to see it head shift, shift towards whitish, kind of. So, and then I can add it back. Blah, shift it gray, then shift it like light lightish purplish almost now it's shifting towards I mean I can literally create a ton of different colors here obviously now I'm getting it's heading white it's getting whiter and there we have it there's completely white now obviously I can shift it back down or whatever however I want to and change the colors back around but you guys can see that this key pressed thing we can do a bunch of different stuff by pushing a bunch of different buttons on the keyboard you guys could create all kinds of different codes that take all kinds of different inputs from different keys on the keyboard and does a whole bunch of stuff with it later on i plan on doing a pretty interesting code with the key pressed function and i might actually add the mouse into it as well that probably will be a few tutorials down the road yet though I, we got some a few other things we got to learn yet but as you guys can see this is a pretty awesome method and it allows us just to just by simply just typing this key phrase right here this void key pressed it will respond to key input this set of code will be executed every time the key is pressed it will check all these conditions and such and such so um, you guys can play around with this code mess around with it you can add in another case like if case you set R to 0 set BG to 0 for I or something you guys can make it to where you can reset them to 0 or you can reset them to the max I'm not going to show you guys that because I'm sure you can already guess how you would do that type of stuff Anyways, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. I'm not really sure what I'm going to introduce to you guys next time, but I'm sure it's going to be pretty awesome. So please uh, watch for the next tutorial. Uh, guys, uh, please check out my website, like, subscribe. Um, there will definitely be more interesting tutorials to come. So that's all I have for you guys for this time, and I will see you guys in your next processing tutorial.